finally, let's take a look at some of our amazing mods that are available for breeding. Now, this is not meant to be an in-depth tutorial on how to breed. There are certainly many better qualified than I to go over that, but simply to take a look at some of the tools that are available to make breeding easier. And the first and most important of those is the Best Egg Maker. This is a life changer for breeding. You no longer need to worry about the incubator. You don't need air conditioners. You don't need a ring of fires. Instead, all you need is the best egg maker. When you first set it up, I highly recommend that you go into the radio menu and enable auto gather eggs and also enable gestation eggs. Auto gather eggs will have it automatically pick up any fertilized eggs in its radius and gestation eggs will make it so that any animals that normally gestate and give live birth will instead produce an egg. So let's go ahead and test this out. I have my lovely Parasaur pair here and I'm going to go in and turn on my female and have them produce an egg for me. Once the egg is laid, the best egg will automatically pick it up and put it in its inventory. All right, so it automatically picked up that egg. I'm going to go ahead and turn you off. And we come back over here to our best egg. Now I have two eggs in here, one from a previous one. And you can see that this one over here is already just about fully incubated. This is my new one that just popped in there now. When I select an egg, I'm going to see a bunch of stats. Now this one, you'll notice, says best egg failure. That's because one of the parents could not be found. In order for best egg to work at its best capability, it's important to have the original parents out within range so that it can detect all of their stats and details. It's not absolutely necessary, but if you want to use all of the features to their fullest, it is very helpful. So with this one, it can't find the parents, so it's just going with the basic stats that it has available. In order to hatch this egg, I'm going to go ahead and just throw it out of the incubator. And oh look, twins. So now I have my little critters here, and I'm just going to go ahead and make them stop following me. Now my second egg in here you'll notice looks a little different when I select it. This is because both parents are available. And these green stats are the best stats available. So I can see that I have a female baby. I could change it to male if I wanted. I'm going to leave it at female and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click make best egg. It's going to go ahead and make sure that baby has the highest stat points for every stat based on the parent stats. But that's not all. I'm going to select it again and I'm going to come down to toggle details. Here are the colors of the baby. Here are the colors of the parents. If I don't like my baby's colors, I can go into edit colors. I have all of these colors available. I have my color region zero selected. I'm going to make that light red. I'll leave that at cyan. Let's make you light yellow. And we're going to turn you to, let's go with near white for that one. And I'm going to save those colors. So now when I select this guy again and toggle details, here are the new colors for my baby. So now I can go in, kick him out, and, well, my lucky day, twins again. But now my babies have those custom colors that I chose for them. I had mentioned earlier about the Dino Tracker and that being very important. 
Um, as soon as my babies are hatched out, what I want to do is I want to go in, get my dino tracker. I'm going to put one of those inside its inventory and force it to consume it. You'll notice it now has the little blue map marker above it. That means that it is now able to be tracked with a teleporter or teleporter remote and I can retrieve it from anywhere on the map if I lose it. We'll let these babies sit here and grow up for a minute. Um, I can also go ahead and soul ball any that I want to imprint and remember that the soul balls will go ahead and automatically imprint for you. So the last thing to look at over here are the SS mutators and I have five of these set up. Mutators are fantastic for breeding. There is no more trying to wait ages and ages and ages for mutations. If you set up some mutators, they do require element to run, but when you go in and we look at our mode, this will send out a pulse of radiation that causes nearby dinos to lay mutated eggs or give birth to mutated offspring. So this will force a mutation. Now it doesn't guarantee which mutation, but it will force a mutation. Even better than that, these mutations stack. So if I set up all five of these and send out that mutation pulse, the dinos that it irradiates, when they get a mutation, they will have five mutations stacked into that instead of just one. So let's say I get that elusive melee mutation. Instead of just one point mutated in melee, I would get five at once. This significantly speeds up the breeding and mutating process. But wait, that's not all. If I go back into my inventory here, I have a change mode option. Your SS mutator can do a lot more than just giving mutations to babies. My next one is gender swap. If you are trying to get a pair of dinos or you have a baby that hatches out and it's the wrong gender from what you're looking for, you can swap the gender of nearby dinos using the mutator. Next up, we have grants a random gender to nearby genderless dinos. Um, this will take a dino that does not normally have a male or female gender, and it will randomly assign a gender to that dino. Makes it easy to go in and breed things that normally wouldn't be able to breed. And that brings us to our next one. This next one grants the ability of dinos that normally can't breed and forces them to be able to breed. Very, very handy. I've used this with text riders. Makes it easy to breed up your own little army of things you normally wouldn't be able to. Next up, we have the um, age freeze. This will stop nearby dinos from aging. Uh, this is great if you want a whole crop of little babies running around your base that do not grow up. And then we get into the fun stuff. This is the Corruptor. This will take a normal dino and turn it to its corrupted version from extinction. However, keep in mind this will only work on dinos that are normally available as corrupted on that particular map. You can do the same for aberration dinos, to convert regular dinos to aberrant dinos, to X dinos, and to R dinos. And again, they must have an actual XR corrupted whatever counterpart that would naturally spawn in order to do this. And then brings us back to our mutation pulse. So the SS mutators, one of the greatest tools for breeding and raising dinos ever, along with your best egg, they are going to make your life as a breeder a million times easier.